William N. Ruderell. And Judy Cross. <laughs> You are? Madeline Lee Taylor. I reside in Meridian, Idaho. Uh, my partner and I raised calves out in Canyon County for 20 years. And we didn't really run into a lot of uh, discrimination out there because we had good calves. <laughs> <laughs> I worked for the telephone company at the time and there's no discrimination in the telephone company. They've got a good policy. I was on the Pluralism Council there, State Pluralism Council. I served my country for six years in the Navy. I served this state as an emergency medical technician for 20 years, volunteering in Meridian Fire Department and CUNA Fire Department. My church teaches that Jesus came to save us from our sins, not from our sexuality. And if you want to know what Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed for, read Ezekiel 16. I serve as a deacon. I take food out to the interfaith sanctuary. I'm a good citizen. You all know my story. You've read it in the newspapers, trying to get my wife interned out at the Veterans Cemetery. That was discrimination. I lost two jobs early in my career fired for being gay. If we had this law, I would not have to sue this state just to bury my wife. Pass the law. All four words. No more, no less. Are there questions? Hearing none, thank you, sir. No questions. <laughs> Please tell us who you are because I think I've lost track. <laughs> Thank you so much for this opportunity to, uh, to speak with you and, and especially for your commitment to hear everyone's testimony. Please state your name really for the is, record. Is, uh, democracy in Action. I'm Judy Cross. I live in, and work in Boise, and I'm a deacon in my church. Uh, I'm a nurse. I was the first clinical nurse specialist in Idaho. And I'm also the president of the board of directors for the Interfaith Alliance, which um, speaks from the hearts of a multiple of denominations and uh, faith groups across Idaho. I distinctly and sadly remember a time when I was homophobic and I was teaching nursing and had two lesbian students. Out of totally unfounded fear of what I didn't understand at the time, I watched them very closely when they were with female patients. My fear blinded me of their humanity and I regret that ever since because I was involved in a faculty-wide dis discrimination against those two young women. Um, and then ironically, I was married to a very loving, caring husband who realized after we had been married for 10 years that he was gay. He um, was also, and I was going to tell you more about him, but he was probably one of the first open Episcopal priests in Idaho. He um, lost his position um, after charges were brought against him, against us, for him being gay and us staying married. He. Um, and through the course of, of dealing with all of that, I was, uh, I was told that I needed to find another place to live, another place to work, because people like me would find a better place uh, where I would be accepted, maybe in San Francisco, instead of in Idaho, where people just you know, don't act like that. Thankfully, um, even though uh, we lost our home, our children were bullied, they uh, have scars to this day because of the bullying and the harassment that they received. But the, thankfully, with, in Boise now, that wouldn't happen because we have our non-discrimination ordinance. 
but that does still occur in many places of, of our uh, great state. Many gay and transgender persons have been hurt by their churches and have run away from their churches and have lost their faith. I've not lost my faith, although it, it fa has faltered at times. But discrimination is not a part of my faith. Another piece that I wanted to bring to you is that one of my administrators has been um, working very hard to recruit specialists to come to our hospital and work with our high-risk patients. And she's complained to me multiple times in the last couple of years that, that she cannot get the specialists here because they refuse to come to some place where they can't bring their partners and feel safe and comfortable in their employment. It's very important at this time, I believe that you have a special time right now for such a time as this, our honored, honorably elected officials. It is your chance to make a positive difference for our gay and transgender constituents, as well as set a tone for care and safety for all discrimination, to end all discrimination rather than codify the freedom to discriminate and deny a group of people protection to make a living, live securely, and obtain basic services. I urge you to find the compassion in your hearts that you have for all your constituents in this great state and send House Bill 2 with a due pass to the floor. I'm a person of faith and I believe that you are here for this important mission now for such a time as this. Thank you very much for your time, for your attention, your compassion, and your integrity in adding the four words, no more, no less. I stand for a question. Are there questions? Thank you. William. And my full testimony is here. William Bruderell. Bruderell. Okay, Rebecca Johnson, would you like to come forward? <laughs> then, Anna Brass Greer, Misty Tolman, uh, <coughs> Carrie Sandsgood, I think, Ashley Thompson, Sheena Loosley. Father Thomas Foucher. Go ahead. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, um, Chairman of the Committee. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak and share my thoughts with you. I heard a lot of testimony yesterday evening and yesterday morning, and there were some very intelligent people that have a lot of experience legally and in their callings as um, church officers. I don't really have anything like that, so what I'm going to share with you is from my heart and my personal opinion. My name is Rebecca Johnson, and I'm British, as you might be able to tell. But I have the privilege of living in the United States of America now for 10 years, just over eight of which have been in this beautiful state of Idaho, which I love. I feel grateful every day to live in a safe place where my husband and I are able to raise our elementary-aged children. I'm also the proud aunt of 21 nieces and nephews. I love each of them and want, just as I want for my children, very much for them to enjoy health, success, and live lives full of love. Some of them live here in, the, in, in Idaho. Some of them live back in Britain. One of my nephews, Mark, is an intelligent, hardworking 21-year-old that works for British Airways as a head air steward. He's lucky to be able to fly internationally anywhere he would like in the world. He will, however, not fly to visit us here in Idaho. It's not because he doesn't particularly care to spend time with family that adore him. It's not because he wouldn't love to ski up in Sun Valley and enjoy the gorgeous part of the world we have chosen to live in. Rather, it's because he's an openly gay man and refuses to come to a place where his basic human rights are not protected. He has a choice. He can visit where he pleases. He lives in a country where he doesn't have to live daily with the knowledge that who he is precludes him from certain services and opportunities. Gay and transgender members of our community can't say the same thing. I also happen to be an active member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I do speak for myself, but I feel that that's an important issue. Yesterday, as you all know, the church made a public statement regarding their position on the issue of safeguards for gay and, tra gay and transgender people. 
And as someone who has felt strongly about the need for such protections for a long time, I was thrilled to see the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints speak out on legislation regarding that issue. Elder Dallin H. Oaks of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, the governing body of our church, made the following statement, and I quote, We call on local, state, and the federal government to serve all of their people by passing legislation that protects vital religious freedoms for individuals, families, churches, and other faith groups, while also protecting the rights of our LGBT citizens in such areas as housing, employment, and public accommodation in hotels, restaurants, and transportation, protections which, which are not available in many parts of the country. This position is also consistent with the church's support in 2009 for Salt Lake City ordinances that protected housing and employment rights for gay and transgender people and with statements the church has made against bullying and intimidation of gay about 30 youth. seconds. Okay. I love the Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ. I strive to live a good life, to raise my children, to be compassionate, hardworking citizens. I love that we live here and that I have the opportunity to have a home and a job and to raise my children the way that I see fit. It affects me deeply to know that friends of mine, gay and transgender in this community, are still subject to discrimination, despite the fact that they are good people who contribute to our society. I urge you, good ladies and gentlemen of the committee, to extend to every member of our community the right to safeguards of, th of things that each of us take for granted daily. Thank you very much for your time. There's one question that, that uh, I have, and that's, uh, uh, do, you think, do you think that this particular bill uh, goes beyond what, uh, what uh, the, the uh, LDS Church uh, declared yesterday? Um, I don't think so, and in the small amount that I know about the Utah bill, that this was directly related to their statement. I don't know anything about that bill, but I don't believe so. I believe, and again, I have such little experience with legislation, and the comment that was made yesterday about the um, legal repercussions that might occur in relation to this bill, um, I don't have any experience with that. However, to me, it seems like... Like, like a right that the saviour would want people to have to be treated fairly and kindly and with love. And as an LDS woman, that is how I choose to live my life, is with love. And I have to do that based upon my faith, because I don't have all of the answers, you know. And as much as this is an issue that goes beyond just the love and all of those things, it has to be legally sound and... I don't understand that part, but I do feel like the church supports legislation for, for basic protections for people. Further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Hannah Brass Greer. Misty Tolman. Mr. Chairman, there's someone that has a doctor appointment this afternoon. May I interrupt? I would like to donate my three minutes so for Ms. Greer so oh. she can have six minutes. We will not, <laughs> we, we, we will not allow that. <laughs> That's never happened before. <laughs> we, we, won't, we won't allow <laughs> donating time around here. Uh, in fact, if you want to donate time, would you, would you do that to, to people whose time is running out? I mean, literally, uh, if we had the ability to do that in life, we could probably prolong the lives of some folks. But uh, we, we're operating now on some very strict timelines. We, we have got to move on. Uh, so if you've got something to say, we'll let you say that, but you've got three minutes, Thank Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I don't want to give up my three minutes to somebody else, but if they could speak before me, and I can, go, I can come back whenever you're here, I'm here. Um, but they have a doctor appointment this afternoon, so can I... Uh, who, who would that be? There's Charlie Collins. Okay, would you come forward, and then we'll let And we'll I'll let come Hannah. whenever you want me. We'll, we'll, let you. You, we'll let you go next. Okay. Thank you. Well, now that everybody knows I have a doctor's appointment, that is <laughs> kind of awkward for us all. We so, won't. We won't ask the next question. Thank okay. you. Thank you. My name is Charlie Collins. I reside here in Boise, Idaho. 
I would like to thank you guys with the utmost gratitude for this opportunity to speak before you. I'm here for House Bill 2, or add the words as, if we, as we've all come to know it. And I apologize in advance for a tender heart because I'll cry and I'm a pretty ugly crier. So for you in front of me, I, I'm sorry. I stand before you today as a lifelong active member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Since I could vote, I have been registered as a Republican. I grew up in rural Arco, Idaho, and I'm the oldest of 10 children. I grew up in a working class family full of self-employed farmers and excavators. And from the time I was about 10 years old, I could operate almost any piece of equipment imaginable. My mother has always told me where there is a will, there is a way, and where there is not, there is an excuse. And my father was an absolute perfectionist, modeling a job well done every single day. He would often leave before the sun would rise and not come home until well after dark. Many of those days I spent with my father. And looking back now, at the time, I just enjoyed being with my dad. But now it's turned into one of my most valuable skills I possess, which is an impeccable work ethic. In high school, I participated in a variety of activities, ranging from student council to seminary class president and athletics. I excelled in sports, getting a scholarship opportunity for softball in New Jersey. I chose to enlist in the world's greatest Air Force instead, where after a short time, I was medically discharged. Upon my discharge, I returned back home to Idaho, and I've made my career as a behavioral therapist and as a high school boys basketball coach. Like my fellow Republicans, I believe in the American dream and it being obtainable through hard work with equal opportunity for all. Like my fellow brothers and sisters of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I believe in a merciful God. And as the president of our church, Thomas S. Monson once said, never let a problem to be solved become more important than a person to be loved. Yeah, and about like, 30 seconds from And now. like my fellow members of my LGBT community, we want to be treated with the same golden rule that we extend to others while we live, work, and serve among you all. I want to feel like not only me, but the rest of my community is treated fair and equally by the laws of our state that we all call home. I would like to end on a note that it isn't our beliefs that make us good people, but our behavior instead. While I agree that Idaho is full of good Samaritans that wouldn't look to discriminate, I would hope for the legislation to pass, encouraging that our behaviors follow suit. I encourage you to ha pass House Bill 2 as is. And again, I'd like to thank you for your time. Are there questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, glad we can accommodate you. Anna, would you like to come up? Thank you for that, Mr. We're, we're, not, we're not aware of this stuff, so we, we're happy that you did that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, good morning. My name is Hannah Brasker, and I'm the Legislative Director for Planned Parenthood. I'm here in support of House Bill 2. I would first like to sincerely thank you for holding this hearing for the last few days and listening carefully to everybody's stories. Before I give my prepared remarks, I'd like to clear up a couple of questions that have come up over the past few days. First, I'd like to talk about the definitions. I know there's been some confusion, some references to Facebook and other places where we may find definitions of things. Luckily, we don't base our laws on Facebook definitions. The federal, excuse me, federal rules and regulations, as well as case law, have clearly and well-established definitions for sexual orientation and gender identity. Sexual orientation means heterosexuality, homosexuality, or bisexuality. Again, they're universally accepted by the courts. There is also a lot of fear expressed about excess lawsuits and the costs and burdens to employers and businesses. The process set up and followed by the Human Rights Commission is designed to not only protect the person filing complaint, but also the business. In fact, the Commission has a near 100% satisfaction rate among all parties involved in the process. I hope this was cleared up earlier, but nothing in this bill impacts the First Amendment rights of clergy. They can continue to preach and teach as they wish and do not have to marry an anyone they don't want to. With that, I'll turn to, my, to a few general comments about our support. Absent these protections, people in Idaho live in fear every day. Because of discrimination and fear of discrimination, many gay and transgender employees hide their identities, are paid less, and have fewer employment opportunities than their non-LGBT counterparts. 
This can lead to devastating economic insecurity and puts them at increased risk for poor physical and mental health outcomes. I hope you all agree that this is unacceptable. Employees should be judged on their qualifications, experience, and job performance. Gay and transgender Idahoans should be treated fairly and equally under the law. They should have the opportunity to earn a living, have a place to live, and be served by a business just like everyone else. This bill cannot tell people how to feel or believe, nor does it attempt to. Updating the law won't end all fair and unfair treatment overnight. However, updating the law will help ensure that all people who want to work hard and contribute to their communities are treated fairly. Everyone deserves this equal protection. This bill doesn't give gay and transgender residents and employees special rights, but it does allow them to contribute to the economic health of Idaho, earn a living, and be able to provide for their families, just like the rest of us want to. With that, I urge you, thank you. I'm ending early. I would urge you to vote yes on House Bill 2, and I'll stand for questions. Thank you. Are there questions? Representative McCrosty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Greer, um, you, um, I, I appreciate your point um, in stating that uh, we don't base our, our uh, laws on Facebook definitions. And you provided a, uh, a definition of sexual orientation as, as homosexuality, heterosexuality, and bisexuality. Um, I wanted to know if you could provide a, a definition for gender identity. Anna? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative McCrossey, no problem. Um, gender identity is a person's gender-related identity, appearance, or behavior. Whether or not that gender-related identity is different from that traditionally associated with the person's physiology or assigned sex at birth. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Misty Tolman. Gary Sands, good, would be next. Uh, Ashley Thompson, Sheena Loosley, Brother Thomas Voucher. Mr. Chairman, I also, I'm sorry to do this again, but I know of a professor okay. from Boise State who's here, okay. and she can't come back in the afternoon because of class, and I was hoping she could go before me and I can come back whenever. Okay. Is she here? Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Leslie Madsen Brooks. Uh, I live here in Boise. I am straight, married, a mother, and a history professor. We've been hearing a lot in this room in the past few days um, about how if Idaho bans discrimination against LGBT people, we'll be starting down a slippery slope that leads towards some kind of physical and cultural hellscape. Let me tell you a different story. Forty years ago, I was born into and subsequently raised in a, middle, a respectable middle-class neighborhood where at least 25% of the homes in my street were occupied by gays or lesbians. It was a vibrant neighborhood, full of families with children who went to the nation's best colleges and universities. Today, the neighborhood appears to be more than a third, if not half, LGBT and it is full of professionals and business owners, some of whom own and run restaurants and shops in the community. In large part due to the care of these professionals and their families, the neighborhood remains beautiful and prosperous. The, age, the already aged house my parents bought for $28,000 in 1969 is now worth approximately $1.5 million. The large windows of these beautiful homes are often uncovered. We can see right through them into the backyards where dogs romp and children play. It feels safe, this transparency. Here, however, my colleagues and students tell me of living in fear, quietly behind closed doors, hiding their identities. The few LGBT couples I have identified in my neighborhood, I have noticed, tend to keep their blinds and curtains closed and rarely appear together in the front yard. There's an opacity that suggests fear. In my neighborhood, I live near Boise's LDS Temple. I feel as if I have time traveled to a decade before I was born and I say this as a history professor. Idaho cannot rightfully take pride in being thus different from many states. Denying a group of people their human or civil rights because of an, an immutable characteristic is shameful. It doesn't just affect their lives, it affects my life, my neighborhood life, my community, my family. It affects my son. He's nine and he's not yet expressed his sexual orientation. 
However, I'm so relieved he was not here in the last two days to hear the words of hate emanating from this podium earlier in the testimony. It is my greatest wish that he and his friends grow up without that kind of hate and fear and the violence it engenders. About 30 seconds. Thank you very much. I will stand for questions. Are there questions? Thank you. Thank you. Misty? Thank you, Chairman, members of the committee. Good morning. My name is Misty Tolman, and I was born and raised here in Idaho. I live in Meridian with my wife and four children. Sorry, this has been a long time coming, being able to stand here in front of you and testify in a public hearing. Maybe I was naive, but I wasn't expecting to come here these past two days and hear my friends, my family, and the people I love have things said about them that I refuse to repeat. My friends, like Emmy and Danielle, treated horribly and had salacious things said about them because they look different from me. I've even received a threatening voicemail since this um, hearing started. The comments that have been made the last two days alone are reason why we need to update the Idaho Human Rights Act. I am here today as your sister, your friend, your neighbor. I know what it's like to be afraid every day of losing my job if somebody found out that I was gay. I lived with that fear myself so much that at my job I would withdraw from personal conversation with my boss, with my coworkers. I would not fully engage or participate in my occupation, working hard so that I didn't lose my job, so that I could provide for my children. But withdrawing whenever possible. I didn't talk about my weekends, if I could help it. I didn't have pictures of my family at work. If I was asked a direct question that I had to answer, I would leave out my partner or try to change pronouns and then try to remember who I told what and keep everything straight. It, these, these regular questions literally become in your head a matter of having a livelihood or not. And it's something that people shouldn't have to live with. I can imagine that at times I appeared disconnected and not About invested in my work. Left. Our forefathers believed that no artificial impediments should hold anyone with ambition back that every American must have the right to achieve their American dream with no contrived man-made obstacles. Yet that's the reality for thousands in Idaho, and nobody should have to live with that. Every day that we fail to update the Idaho Human Rights Act is one more day that gay and transgender Idahoans have to live under a system that legalizes and codifies the harm and fear that they have to live with every day. Skip to the end. My family, needs to be added to the Idaho Human Rights Act. I need to be added to the Idaho Human Rights Act. We're standing in front of you asking for help that only you can give us. The legislature has lots of tough questions in front of it every session, but this is an issue that gives Idaho nothing to lose and so much to gain. I urge you to vote yes to updating the Idaho Human Rights Act. Thank you, I stand for questions. How are the questions? Representative McCrosty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Tolman, um, you are a, you appear as a, as a beautiful woman. You have, um, you've stated that you have four children. You don't look gay. Um, <laughs> how would you be discriminated against? I, I agree that I, I, have a little bit of a, a privilege there that people might not look at me and know right away, right off, that a lot of my gay and transgender friends don't have. 
for me, it was just if they found out, if I, if I messed up and said the wrong thing. But for so many others, they don't have that privilege. They don't, they don't have that, that extra layer of, of insulation and people can make assumptions about them right away and, and it's even worse for them. Thank you. Further questions? Thank you. Gary sounds good. 